I am Zarina Sidesheva, lecturer of IT and digital resources in teaching foreign languages. Lecture number eight, Google Forms, Flubaro, and Socrative programs. Outline for today's lecture. Creating the test using Google Form, ways to use the Flubaro platform, creating the test in a Socrative environment. Google Forms is a survey administration app that is included in the Google Drive Office Suite and Google Classroom along with Google Docs, Google Sheets and Google Slides. Forms features all of the collaboration and sharing features found in Docs, Sheets and Slides. Google Forms is a tool that allows collecting information from users through a personalized survey or quiz. The information is then collected and automatically connected to a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is populated with the survey and quiz responses. So you need to follow google.com, type Google Forms and find this program in the apps of the Google family. After choosing Google Form, new Google Form, you can change the theme, you can change the color or you can put into some pictures. Also, the next step you need to choose question type. There are a lot of them. Text, paragraph text, multiple choice, choose from a list or some fill in and etc. Now let's choose the text. So click add item on the survey to add another question. There are a variety of types of questions to add to the survey. Headers, images and videos can also be added to the form. So this is a screenshot of the different types of questions like multiple choice or for example scale. Also you can choose date and time uh, of this test. For example, you will send this test to your students and you can choose for example Monday uh, 28th of September and uh, from 12 till 1 p.m. Uh, that the time of duration of this test. You can also edit, view and send the link to the students. Also, you can type the title section header of your test, edit questions. Google has added a few new features to Google Forms. Only allow one response per person and shuffle question order. Also, you can add in images and video or insert video from YouTube. Type in a topic to find a YouTube video related to your survey. After that, you can send the form. Send form to people to complete the survey. Click Send Form, enter email addresses. Share the global form so that you can collaborate with other people to edit the survey and or add questions. Hey everyone, in this short video I'm going to show you how the new Google Forms, the one in purple, <laughs> looks. So if you are familiar with the old version of Google Forms, or perhaps you've never created a Google Form, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. First thing you need to do is you need to log into your Google account and go to Google Drive, which would look like this. 
Once you're there on the left hand side, you want to go ahead and click that new button. Come down here to the more and find Google Forms, the new purple icon. And go ahead and click that and it's going to open a new window that you see here. Now, if you are familiar with the old version of Google Forms, this looks a lot different. And if you prefer the old Google Forms, I want to point out right down here in the lower left-hand corner, this little running man guy. And if you hover over, it says back to the old Google Forms. And if you click that, it'll actually take you to the older version of Google Forms. And sometimes it's even asking here, why did you do that? So if you want to leave some feedback, you can do that there. So you can see, here's what the old version of Google Forms looked like. But for this video, we're going to go back to the new forms. And real quickly, just kind of going through what everything is in, uh, in the window that you see here. The nice thing about the new version of Google Forms is if you hover over all of the icons, it tells you what it is. So this little puzzle piece is add-ons, color palette, preview, settings. Right down here, you've got adding a question. If you want to add a title and a description, you can add an image, you can add a video, or make a new section. So we'll do some of what each of those are in just a little bit. But the first thing we want to do, I'm going to go back up here to the corner and give this a title. I'm going to say sample form. Hit enter and actually just click somewhere else and you can see that it automatically puts this as the title in my header and under the form description I'm just going to put something this is a sample form you can put whatever you'd like in here and the difference between the new Google Forms and the old Google Forms is a form is attached to a spreadsheet and the new Google Forms still attached to a spreadsheet but you also have the option of seeing some of the responses directly in the form, which I'll show you in the next video how to do that. For now, let's just kind of concentrate on how to make a Google form. So I've got my title. I've got my help text or my description. So let's make a question. So untitled question, I'm going to click there. And let's say my first question, I want to put, what is your name? And over here in the right-hand side, if I click this drop down, it shows you all of the different kinds of questions that you can put or inputs that you can put in your form. Now, if I'm asking for someone's name, I'm going to make that a short answer where they could just type right in here. And if I wanted to put a little help text, this, these three bars right here, if I click this, the hint text, I might put something like first and last to remind them that, hey, I wanted both of those. And when I'm done, I can just click anywhere. Oh, I'm going to make this a required question. You don't have to, but I'm going to make that a required question. And now I'm done with this question. If I go up here and click the preview button, you can see that this is what it would look like. So I'm going to go back and I want to add another question. So I'm going to click the plus, add a question. So you can see that it puts that question here. So let's say, for example, what is your favorite kind of food? Because I'm hungry. So let's just say, for example, oh, and I am going to keep this as, again, I have different choices, but I want this to be multiple choice. So let's say, we'll say Italian, uh, Mexican food, hmm, let's see, Chinese American, let's scroll down a little bit so you can see, Indian, and I'm just going to say, I'm going to click that other, okay? And I'm going to also make this a required question, and pretty much I'm done. If I wanted to shift any of these around, see by hovering over each of the multiple choice possibilities, I could actually reorder these. See, something like that. So whatever order you want, you can put those in. So once again, i then going to go up to the top, and I'm going to click the preview. And there is my sample form. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to view the responses from that form. Now let's speak about next program, Flubaro. 
Clobar is a free tool that helps you quickly grade multiple choice or fill in blank assignments. More than just a grading tool, Flubar also computes average assignment score, computes average score per question and flags low scoring questions, shows you a grade distribution graph, gives you the option to email each student their grade and answer key, lets you send individualized feedback to each student. Hey teacher! Did you know that you can use Google Forms to give assignments and assessments to your students and classes? And now with Fluberoo, you can quickly grade them too. For this demo of Fluberoo, I created a fake assignment as a Google Form, and I've submitted answers myself. All of the submissions were automatically inserted into the destination spreadsheet shown here. Now that I have all the submissions, I'd like to grade them, which is where Fluberoo comes in. Fluberoo is an add-on that you can install from right within the spreadsheet. To save time in this demo, I've already pre-installed it. Once installed, you'll see a new menu called Fluberoo underneath the main add-ons menu. Let's select Great Assignment and see what happens. In step 1, Fluberoo asks me to select a grading option for each question asked, such as if it's worth points, if it identifies a student like a name or an email address, or if it should be skipped. Fluberoo will do its best to identify the correct option for you. Once I've correctly selected all grading options, I can click Continue to move on. In Step 2, Fluberoo asks me to identify which submission should be used as the answer key. Looking through them, I recognize the first one as the submission I made earlier, which I want to use as the answer key. Once selected, I can continue on with the grading. Once started, the grading should finish within under a minute. Great, it's done already. Now I can click on View Grades to see the result. Note that to record the grades, Fluberoo has created a new adjacent worksheet called Grades, seen here in the lower left. At the top of this worksheet is a summary of the grading, including the average score and other useful statistics. Beneath this are the grades themselves, which include the total score expressed in both points and percent, the number of times this student made a submission, and of course the score for each individual question, which in this case is either zero points or one point. Also, for each question, the very last row shows the percent of students who got it correct. Questions on, list, on which less than 60% of the students got the right answer are highlighted in orange. Additionally, the names of the students will be in red font if they scored less than 70% on the assignment. Besides grading, Fluberoo has other useful features as well. For example, Fluberoo can show you a report showing the distributions of grades, which you can email to yourself. Additionally, and most popularly, Fluberoo can email grades to each student. You'll have the option to include an answer key or not, as well as a personal message to include in the email. Thanks for watching. I hope Fluberoo can be helpful to you and your students. Please send comments or feedback to Dave at edcode.org. Keep Fluberooing! The last program that we will discuss is Socrative. Socrative is a free web application that offers an easy and friendly experience to teachers to engage and access their students. It is a full-featured application that can be used on Android and iOS devices. Socrative is an easy-to-use tool that is used for creating formative assessments and getting results in the actual time. Here is a complete guide for teachers on how to use Socrative. Easy and smart, Socrative students respond system of resize educators by engaging their class with a number of educational games and exercises. There is a simple procedure to log in with this wonderful app that can be run on laptops, smartphones and tablets. You need to register and then log in yourself in order to use this app. So, if accessing through vsocreative.com or an app, select the purple register button or go to www.socreative.com and click teacher sign up. 
enter an email and password. After that, you will receive a unique room code, which your students will use to access your activities. Log in. Visit Socrative.com or open on your Socrative app. Teachers enter their email and password. If you use a Google account email or Google domain email, you can log in with this. Students enter their teacher's unique room code. Engaging. Teachers can log in to their device and perform many activities available on their dashboard. On the creative, teachers can do a lot of activities to engage students. Dashboard. On the dashboard, you can do various activities such as start quiz, quick questions, space run, and etc. More about dashboard. You can see a number of students you in your room, return to teacher's dashboard from any screen, click to see expanded menu, clear students from your room, and you can get this one or you are not currently running any activities. Manage quiz. So quizzes are the best means to judge students' knowledge and with Socrative teachers can easily judge their students' understanding and knowledge of a particular lesson. You can create a quiz, design your own assessment, import quiz, import other teachers' quizzes using a SOC, reports, see all the reports from your prior ass assessments, and my quizzes, see all the quizzes you created or imported. So, assessment. Students will see this screen before you start an activity or between activities. Students will be prompted for their name if it is a quiz, based activity or a quick short answer, or you can choose to disable names. Students will then enter the activity. Example pictured is a student-based quiz question. Students' replies are visually presented. For any pre-planned activity, educators can see reports online. When a teacher performs any activity, what students see is. Why Socrative is preferred? Quick feedback. Student results flashes on the teacher's screen as they respond to the quizzes and questions. Hence, teachers can easily visualize what is happening and what students are doing at the moment. Personalized content. Here, educators can edit and design their own library assessments and can also share it with their personal learning network. Reports. Students' understanding can be reviewed in different types of format. Reports can be emailed or can be downloaded or can be saved into Google Drive. Computability. This app is available in for iOS apps, all web browsers, Windows app, Android, Chrome app, Kindle, apps making it reachable for every educational technology settings. Hello, this is Brenna from Socrative, and today I'm going to show you quickly how to create and launch quizzes for your students in your Socrative teacher account. So within your teacher account, when you log in, you're going to be started on the launch page here, and this is where you can select one of the six different activity types to run for your students. If you click on quiz, you'll open up the full list of quizzes that are currently housed within your Socrative account. If you're a brand new user, this World Facts quiz is going to already be preloaded into your account for you to use as test material, and any other quizzes that you create throughout your use of Socrative will be available for you here. I'm going to go ahead and select my World Facts quiz here to start with. Once you've selected the quiz that you'd like to run, there are a number of different settings that you need to determine before you launch it. The first to choose is your delivery method. There are three delivery methods available, and they just change the way in which your students are going to interact with the content of your quiz. So the first one is instant feedback. An instant feedback quiz will allow your students to answer each question and, and then be shown immediately whether or not their response was correct or incorrect. Open navigation is the second option. With this format, you can have students move backwards and forwards through the quiz to answer the questions in any order, and they can also revise their answer to a question prior to submitting the full quiz at the end. 
the third option is teacher paste. Teacher paste means that you as the teacher are going to control when all of the students in the class move on to the next question in the quiz. So the students will need to wait until you allow them to move on to the next question before they'll be able to complete the quiz. Let's select instant feedback for the example. Once you've selected your delivery method, there are a few additional settings that you can adjust as well prior to launching your quiz. Based on the delivery method, Socrative will make some suggestions as to what uh, settings here might be appropriate. So you can see for instant feedback, um, require names and show question feedback have both been toggled on, but you can adjust those you need for your own quiz here. But I am gonna turn on require names and let's turn on require uh, show final score there as well. Just so you have an idea of what all these different settings mean. Obviously, require names will require your students to enter their name prior to completing the quiz. Shuffle questions and shuffle answers can both be used in order to provide a little bit more um, uh, difference between the uh, questions. So you can have the order of the questions and the order of the potential answers shuffled between students, which is a good option to use if you have any concerns about students potentially peeking over each other's shoulders to try and cheat during an exam. Show question feedback will allow you to display some additional content related to each question as your students work through the quiz. So when building out your quiz, you can choose to provide an explanation to each question and toggling this setting on will ensure that the explanation is displayed to students after they answer the question. And show final score will allow students to see the final score at their quiz at the very end. So that we've chosen the settings that we'd like to use for this particular quiz. You'll see that on the teacher side here, I'm now being shown a results dashboard. So as my students start answering the questions in this quiz, I'll see their results populate here. In order to actually provide the quiz to students, you'll need to have your students log into your Socrative room. So in this window here, I'm gonna log into a Socrative student account. Socrative doesn't have um, set user accounts for students in the same way that it does for teachers. So the way that students access your quiz is by logging into your specific Socrative room. So on the teacher side here, we can see that there is a room name in the top center of my account, which is Smith2003. This is my unique room name, and this is what students are going to use to access my quiz. On the student login, I can have them enter the room name, Smith2003, and click join. And now the students will be able to access whatever quiz content is within this particular room. So here they can now see the first question of the quiz, which is a true or false question. And we can see over on the teacher side as well that the student now appears in the live results dashboard. And as they begin answering questions, we'll see their results populate on the teacher side. After the student has submitted their response, we do have um, the option toggled on for them to see um, the results of that particular question. So I can see that I got this question correct. And we can just work through all the questions of the quiz in this order. So you can see here that you're gonna have the results populated for each student who responds to the quiz questions. Of course, I only have one student participating in this quiz for the purposes of this demo, but if you have your full class in here, they would be listed all in the same view for you. And you can see that their responses are color coded to display whether they got the answer correct or incorrect. So you can see really easily how the class is performing as a whole. When I'm ready for the quiz to be finished, I can click finish up in the top here. And on the student side, you'll see that it updates to um, finish the quiz for them as well. So they now are in a waiting period, waiting for the next activity to begin as there's no other quiz currently running uh, in this particular room for them. Now that we've seen how to launch a quiz for students and what the process is like for students to access that quiz, I'm gonna show you how to create a brand new quiz. So I'm just gonna click into the quizzes tab here at the top. And here is where you can see all of the quizzes that currently are housed within your account. So when we were selecting a quiz to run from the launch page at the very beginning of the video, this is the same list that was pulled up. To add a new quiz, you're gonna click the add quiz button at the top and we'll click to create a new quiz. And you'll be taken through to the quiz editor in Socrative. So we can select a name for our quiz. And then you can see along the bottom of the page, there are three different question types that you have to choose from. So just click the question type you'd like to start with, and then you can enter all of the details for this particular question. 
So for this example, uh, let's look at colors. So that's the question that I'm going to be asking. And then I can fill in all of the different possible answers for this multiple choice question. And then along the side here, I can select which particular answers should be marked as correct. So for primary colors, we're going to be looking at red, yellow, and blue. And then additionally, I can provide an explanation to give some additional context to this question for my students as well. So there's just an example for that. Once I finished the question here, I can click to save it and then move on to the next question that I want to have in my quiz. And then save. Once you've added all of the different questions that you'd like to have within your quiz, you can use the arrow buttons here to move them around and change the order in which they're displayed. You can use this little icon with the two pages to create a duplicate of a particular question if you have a similar question you'd like to ask, so you can just make a few edits. Or you can use the trash icon to delete a question. Up at the very top, just click save and exit when your quiz is done. And then you'll be able to see it listed in your quiz list on the main quizzes page. And you can now select to uh, launch that quiz out of your Socratic room for any students to participate in. Once quizzes are finished, you are going to also receive reports based on that quiz. So you can save the results of your students' work. So if I click into the Reports tab here at the top, I'm going to see a list in chronological order of all of the quizzes that I've run previously from my account. So I can click in to review the results at any time. So just clicking on the quiz uh, reports there uh, take you through to the Live Results dash, just the same way that we saw when the quiz was running for students. And you can also click the reports button in the top right corner to access the additional report types so you can save this data outside of Socrative. There are three different report types to choose from. The whole class Excel sheet is quite similar to the live results dash in that you'll see an Excel sheet that covers all of the students in the class and all of the questions on the quiz and how they responded. Individual student PDFs will provide you with a PDF document for each individual student that just shows how each student uh, responded to the questions. So that's a great one to provide to your students so they can review their work following the quiz. And the question specific PDF is going to go through all the questions of the quiz and show you how the class answered as a whole. So how many students responded with answer A, with answer B, and which ones were correct. You then have a few options for how you can save that material. You can either email it to yourself, download it to your device, or save it to Google Drive. And if you are using Socrative Pro and you have student email addresses available, you can send the individual student PDFs directly to students as well. So there's a quick video showing you how to create and launch quizzes for your students in Socrative and how students will access and complete those quizzes for you, as well as how to retrieve the results of the quizzes afterwards. I hope this has been helpful. Happy quizzing! Let's sum up. Socrative, the right answer types. Questions on Socrative can be either multiple choice, true, false, or free response, so teachers can mix up the format when quizzing students. Different quiz formats. Socrative offers several different ways to quiz students, each serving a different purpose. The basic quiz format is great for working in groups or as an entire class, as the teacher determines when to move on to the next question. This provides a lot of opportunity for discussion if students are confused on a particular question. Google Forms is a tool that allows collecting information from users through a personalized survey or quiz. The information is then collected and automatically connected to a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is populated with the survey and quiz responses. Flubaro is a free tool that helps you to quickly create multiple choices or fill in the blank assignments in Google Form. Here is the list of questions after our lecture. How many types of Google Form tests are there? How many test mod modes are there in Socrative? What can you say about the Flubaro platform? 
In what format can I save the test results in Socrative and make up a test of 10 questions on the topic with 5 variants? Here is the list of references that you can use after our lectures and practical lessons. Thank you for your attention.